Um, Hi, and welcome to a new series of uh, Friends with Tourette's, or Tourette's with Friends. I always get mixed up. <laughs> uh, this is Series 3, Episode 1. Um, we're going to be focusing on a young lad called Spencer. I'm, I'm quite good friends with him. Um, so yeah, we're going to see how his story pans out. He's been on Channel 4, he's also done TV programmes. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, invite him in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, you're right. Yeah, make that back a little bit. That was the most awkward introduction I've ever done. I'm so out of sync. <laughs> but yeah, so everybody, this is Spencer. Um, he's been on Channel 4 programs like My Fucking Threat Family, even though we have a bit of a controversy on the title. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Spencer, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. So, um, like Ryan said, I've been on, on Channel 4. Um, I've done various other work with the BBC um, and different um, channels like that. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm all about Tourette's awareness, really. So, um, yeah, I've known Spencer for a while. Well, okay. Uh, if you do, this will be uploaded onto YouTube after the, like the, the episode's over, the programme. Um, and then, not a bit of wankers. We, um, but we can answer your questions. If you ask questions, remember, it's going up on YouTube and it can help other people if they watch it on the pre-recorded date. So, anyway, Spence, when did you start getting threats? Or when did your family notice? Uh, if I look back now, I can see that I had ticks from a long, long time ago. Um, but like uh, when we first noticed it, um, I was around seven, and I was I got my diagnosis when I was about eight. Um, yeah, so my my bits, we we sort of after a really like long stressful day at school, and then I got home and I had a really um, stressful time at an after school club, and, and yeah, and ticks just sort of started straight away, <laughs> and uh, then yeah. Um, so. Okay, we'll, that, we'll ask that one because that one's all, all like a little lead on. What was your first reaction to having Tourette's or your first tick? Um, I was surprised. My, my first tick was like a heavy sniff in. Uh, <laughs> it's, I've got that tick currently at the moment, uh, but worse than it was. But um, I was surprised and almost scared as well because I didn't know what was going on, but this thing was happening to my body and mm. I... It's like somebody using your body as a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> the only way I can describe it. Yeah, I need control over it. And it's sort of scary because it's like the first experience that I've had with um, something like that. And so, yeah, it was like the first tick that I'd ever had. And so my first reaction was sort of like shocked and I was a bit scared as well. Um, and that, that sort of feeling carried right the way through. Um, for the first year until really I got diagnosed and, and we really knew what what was going on. <laughs> Do you know what, again, same, sort of thinking back to it, when I was like in year seven, I had these like fainting episodes and the funniest memory I can ever remember <laughs> is this really burly fat history teacher, right? And nothing against the size of her, but she was scary. Right, Mrs. Rourke. Um, and I just went down like a sack of shit on these staircases. And all I remember is her running and shouting my name. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up and she's like over me. And I'm thinking she's about to give me the kiss of life. I'm like, please don't, please don't, please don't. And, and then that sort of subsided. And then by when I reached year nine and ten, it just got worse. And well, we all know my story. It was a headache, went into whatever. <laughs> Possibly caused by the flu that then activated the gene or whatever it is. Right. for two seconds because my nose has just started pissing with blood, so I'll be right back. Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> reality of Tourette's. <laughs> Wonder why people want to fake it. <clears throat> Ooh. You all right there, Spence?
yeah, reality of Tourette's, guys, it, it, it's not just neurological or in the brain. It can affect you physically, like we can see with Spencer here. Um, <laughs> so, like, I've known Spencer for a while, and, yeah, his, his nose tips aren't the best ones. That's why I'm kind of glad that I just have the local ones at the moment. <laughs> See, like, the worst, the worst one that's ever happened is this. And this is where Charlie's had to grab me from stopping doing something. And it's just, like, left a horrible scar. Yeah. And then, like, the stretch marks and that where it, like, contorts your body back. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, the worst ones ever. I look like I've been pregnant on my arms. <laughs> hey, Corin. <laughs> and hi, Maze and all the usual crew that join. Oh. Um, you all right? Yeah. All right. Fucking it. So, sort of taking the mind off of it, what, what are <coughs> talking about the physical side and that, what's the most dangerous tick you think you've had? If you've had one? Probably ticks that come with impulsive thoughts and intrusive thoughts. Um, and that's a wider topic that's a bit different. I'm in danger. Um, Sorry. And the, the scariest ticks and the most dangerous. <coughs> ones that I've had would be ones that have come from intrusive thoughts almost and and be scared that um, I used to have intrusive thoughts about jumping in fire or jumping in train tracks and my ticks would sort of <laughs> if I was close to that sort of take on the toll of touching it or jumping towards it and they were really my most scary ones along with falling to the floor quite a rare you know tick as per usual but we were um going to London um, to Great Ormond Street Hospital for my Tourette's load and, and I used to collapse on the underground rush up and people used to stand on me, stamp and kick because oh, I brilliant. stuff, yeah. And so they, they were really like my scariest ones. Um, I had one where my chest would pop in and out and it would look like uh, I was being given CPR and stuff. That was scary. That I ended up going to the hospital for as well so that I could get that um, over to make sure that I wasn't damaging myself. And along with this one as well, this this one's quite... Well, yeah, because you're not just damaging your nose. It's going all the way down to your bloody larynx and your lungs. Oh, yeah. And obviously, sniffing, when you're sniffing the blood in as well, isn't, isn't brilliant. Yeah, and my but, um... keep popping and I keep going dead and so nearly falling over and... I um I get infections in my tonsils because I'm sniffing constantly. So the have you ever? They never thought of taking them out. I've tried. I've asked the doctor. Mm. Well. I've never really. It's weird because normally if you get infections like a certain amount over within a year, they normally take them out anyway just to like stop the hassle. Yeah. I've, I've not had that many infections, but I, I have pain in them constantly and, and infections and things um, with that. Ouch. Yeah. I, I, I guess my scariest one was, like, when I go to hospital for my tic tacs because it's like, I don't know, my body just goes so tired and, like, I'm needing to be sedated. And I'm not being funny. I think one of these days I'm... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if my brain's going to overheat and I'll recover mm -hmm. properly or what, but they're, they're the most scariest ones I've had. You have to have tonsillitis six times a year. Yeah. So it. Mate, sod that. <laughs> they used to tell you to eat ice cream when you had tonsillitis, but now they tell you to eat toast. Be able to keep the scabbing down. Mm -hmm. How nice is that? I did, do you know what? I only found out last year as well that your tonsils isn't the thing that dangles at the back of your throat. <laughs> I'm in danger. It's actually the glands here. I used to, I honestly, 25 years of my life, thought the tonsil was a dangly thing in the back of your throat. Because um, whenever people was like, I need to look at your tonsils, I was like, is it really big? And I used to like look in the mirror and well, I couldn't see it. Um, ooh, what's the funniest trick you have? Oh. I've had loads of funny ones. Um, I've had uh, funny ticks. Um, one, ones like when I was a lot younger, I've um, one where I would uh, tick on a prima ballerina um, out in public, and that was quite funny. 
Um, I've had I've had loads of, of funny ticks. I mean, I, in a, a restaurant, um, <coughs> it was one of in the documentary, you know, the dessert come out and it had like flour on top, you know how they do. <coughs> and I was ticking that like my chef was a coke addict and that he had dropped some on the, on the, <laughs> the cake and stuff. <coughs> You know. My one's my one's got to be coffee dodgers when I'm serving that old couple on on employable me. Um, but no, the, one of the other funny ones is obviously I have reptiles, so I have to get like live food. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm sat in the back of my mum's like partner's car. I think it's her ex partner at this point. <laughs> well, it's her ex partner at this point. Yeah. Um, and I'm sat there and I look at it and I'm just go click. It's on your clip. And then ants in your pants. And then my mum, she was gone. She was gone for. Um, I wanted to sort of backtrack slightly to intrusive thoughts. A lot of people don't realise that that's a part of the Tourette syndrome, like stimulus, as it were, if you want to call it that way. Yeah. Um, so the only way I can sort of describe intrusive thoughts is when your friend comes along with their newborn baby, a lot of people automatically go, oh, that baby's really cute. And you just, Whereas my brain goes to, I wonder if it'll survive if I drop it with the pram off the top of the uh, like story car park. That's <laughs> and you just can't help. Or I'm walking back from town and I'm like, what? Well, somebody stabs me right now. Mm. <laughs> like and but they're not all. They're not to me. They're not just like your, your normal thoughts. They're very focused and forefront. I don't know about your intrusive thoughts. Oh, they're they're evil, and most of them are to do with hurting my myself, and and not, um, not others. To be honest with you, or bad things that could happen to me. Um, I really struggle crossing roads because it's you know, or I'll change my route of the way I'm walking because of roads and things. And uh, like I said, I used to having thoughts where I would should jump, where I should jump in. Um, I had one not too long ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Spence. Bunny! So I had to like. Well, on, my, on how I tell my bunny off for scratching. Um, <laughs> I cleaned her out, and all she wants to do is to scratch, make a new home. Everybody knows Bunny, right? And the only reason why nobody wants their pets at home. Is because she makes her house her own. She doesn't leave it. She's got to do it her own self. And she doesn't like them to do it. Um, there was one intrusive thought that actually almost came to light with me. And I'm sure Maze will remember this. Is I was on the balcony of what now is her place. And I jumped. And luckily she caught me by my shoulder. But I jumped and sort of went almost half of me was over the balcony. And she's seven floors up. She's not... <laughs> Like a low down. Oh my god, I like she nearly died from heart attack. Mm. Um, well, that's what the, is it? isn't it? Because it's it's not intrusive thoughts turn to impulsions, and then impulsions are hard not to do. So, we've got one here. How does it affect you guys when you see and hear people faking their ticks and Tourette's and your appointments get delayed due to increased popular people with supposed ticks? Well. I've got a personal one for this one because obviously, as you can see, Spencer is struggling with a certain tick at the moment. Oh, not bad. And I went to my neurologist and he doesn't live that far away from me. So it was easy, like it's sensible or good idea for me to ask if maybe he could see my neurologist. Now my neurologist is top of his class. He knows exactly what he's doing. Um, so... I obviously asked if he has any time spare to be able to talk to Spencer and his family. Now, he doesn't because there is a surge of ticks and popularity in Tourette's Loved. over the COVID stuff. Now, me and Spencer, we've had this long before TikTok, long before COVID, we like, but there's a big popularity and surge in it. Now, the problem is, is that they, they're now classing them as functional ticks. So you can have people that have functional ticks due to other disorders Ooh, bad. Um, but you, they're now classing it as a new group of functional ticks where people are presenting to have Tourette's or ticks on live or on TikTok and other social media platforms that then they then have to start carrying on in their personal life and it just doesn't go right but out of 80% of you know, out of the 100% of these cases that come to light only 20% are real 
cases that need to be looked into where others are behavioural just to get popular online. <laughs> and there, there's, they're doing a lot of misconception online and a lot of different viewpoints that aren't exactly necessarily direct um, and misrepresentation. And it's becoming quite the problem, I would say. Something I get angry about that I don't know if I should. But... <laughs> and also, um, it's... The the boy, the horrible thing is is it's it's mainly girls when Tourette's can more mainly affect boys, especially in this country. In girl, in America, I know that a lot of girls seem to get Tourette's, but yeah, so a lot of people are faking. And I'm going to say this now, um, just for the point, wankers, that this is the reason why you do not want to be faking. This. Is the reason why people will be faking, and I'm just not my glasses are brilliant. No bit wankers. Right. If you're faking, own up to it, stop it, and just carry on with your life normally. Because you ain't gonna want to do this, and you're wasting a lot of money and time that could be on somebody else. Oh, no bit. Well, of course, you guys should get prolonged in your appointments, etc. When you see Spencer, <laughs> exactly, Spencer. Probably needs a neurologist more than I do at the moment. <laughs> At least I'm sort of specialist. Well, I mean, luck managed. I've got appointments with my cams and things quite quite quickly. Um, and so I get my appointment sorted and me out. Um, not that you know, answer to what's going on at the moment. <clears throat> There's not. <clears throat> An easy way to stop what's going on with, um, with my nose. You rang one one one, didn't you? Oh, oh yeah, phone one one one, and then they went through the bog standard questions that they have to go through with the symptoms that I was providing them with. So that was me going dizzy, having nosebleeds, and feeling like I could throw up. And um, mm. it's all because I sniff so hard, my pressure changes in my ears, so I go all dizzy. Oh, I can't, you know, focus on things and I feel quite sick. <laughs> and then they'd, they'd get a triage nurse to phone me back <clears throat> within the next, uh, six hours. And they phone me back um, and the only advice was um, I need to stop it because that's what's going to stop giving me nosebleeds. Uh, <clears throat> which is why then I managed to get an appointment with CAMS and I spoke to them about, you know, working with the tick and trying to change the tick slightly or stop it, um, yeah. which proved difficult because I tried most of the things, and if not all of the things that they were asking me about. And so now we're looking down other routes of helping me out with it. Um, luckily, I was able to get appointments quite quick, but that's because I know well, my mum's in constant contact with my, um, we know them and we, we're we always in contact. But for people who aren't <clears throat> in always contact with them and aren't always involved with CAMS, I can see how that can be quite hard to get appointments and things come through. Um, Clarissa made a point saying maybe they need to call Trice. No, he's, he's asked everything and they're... I think they're wanting to try to deal with the tick before going into extremes, but sometimes going to extreme first can be the only solution because it's an art say, not bad. Um, going through all this stuff, like um, I've only recently just started reading again, um, and all this thought I have to try other different stuff until I see my neurologist next in four months because <laughs> we don't know what to do with me, but. Oh, that's a lot of cases with people with Tourette's. Up on. Like a lot of you, a lot of neurologists don't know what to do because it is rare. And I mean, and as much as you are seeing it all over the for you page, Tourette's itself is rare. Tick disorder, not so much, but Tourette's itself is rare. I mean, I suppose the per person who has the condition knows the most about it, and especially their condition, because my Tourette's is very different to your Tourette's. So. Yeah more about yours than I do but I'm yeah. fine than you do yeah. so that's going to be the same with someone who's done training on it and got degrees in interest because everyone's different I'm going to know more about it than they it's, it's like a fingerprint 
Definitely. All they do, all they want to do is collect data, put it all together, and then read the 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 similarities as well. There's only a fair few similarities for people that have Tourette's. The rest are very, very broad and different. Um, does that tick wax and wane? Um, I've noticed when you concentrate a lot, you can sort of like me, um, you sort of like calm down. But then it's when we're playing Dead by Daylight and somebody's chasing you. I hear the <coughs> yeah. <laughs> well, quite often we'll be playing it, and um, I'll be like, "My eyes are shut. I can't do it." <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are shut. Tell me when they come. <laughs> I'm hiding in a closet. Um, the severity of threat syndrome. Person to person can be mild very severe. Well, I'm classed as one of the most severe in the country. Not the most severe. One of the most severe. Um, and then Spence was actually told around maybe the other week or a few months ago saying that you're most, one of the most severe that that neurologist has seen. Yeah. So, I've been seen by Great Ormond Street in, in Oxford. Uh, in Oxford? In London as well. Um, and the JR team in Oxford and but I, I mean, I think I think that everyone's, you know. Got, I mean, it depends what type of time you're having because you can have times mm. when aren't bad at all, and then times when they're really bad. And so, yeah. But the, I mean, the funny thing is, when my neurologist saw me, <clears throat> I was having what I thought was quite a calm, ticky day, mm. and he still said that I was quite severe and stuff. And I was like, well, actually, I'm not ticking that much today. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. If I didn't have my tablets, and you seen when I don't have my tablets, I'm I'm an absolute riot and a mess. Luckily, I found something that helps. Yeah. Um, but I found it quite toxic recently that there's like most of the TikTok Tourettes, not like the big named ones. Everybody's trying to be worse off than the other one, and that again doesn't help at all. Do you know what I mean? Most of the, <laughs> it's like people like we were talking about earlier people falling down which is a tick granted but saying that's a tick attack it's not it's just a tick i mean i've got a wheelchair outside my front door here for when those ticks come back and i mean when you're on the channel four show you had the wheelchair didn't you and a lot of people are bashing that online why has he got a wheelchair rah, rah, trying to make himself look disabled well it's like hang on a minute if they're going out for a day out and he's recently had the ticks that make him fall over he's going to need that wheelchair there. Yeah, and especially when they're, you know, it's whenever I get up. I had um, ticked and I was um, accused of faking them so much, like when I couldn't walk. And so we actually went and saw leg specialists and muscle specialists and things. And then, yeah, we've never seen this before, but there's explanations as to why my knees are going and why I can't stand up more than, you know, anything. And it's something to do with how my ticks are spasm in my upper leg muscles and yeah yeah and so i was i was told quite a lot that you know um doesn't make sense and things and and how how my legs you know just went and actually you know I, we went and saw specialists and we got proof because i mean i don't know if people have ever been in you know a wheelchair who's been telling me that it's faking but being in a wheelchair isn't fun no i, I don't like it at all my, and, and, and do you know it's degrading having my partner and my parents push me around at the age of 25 like do you know what i mean like it's... Yeah, in school i you know, when i had it i, I tried to be as you know independent as possible but there's hills there's places that are wheelchair accessible people have to move tables there's um doors that need to be pulled open and that's hard and you know people that are running you know, grab the chair and with it that kind of and then you can't feel when they let go and then you go plastering into a wall. Bunny! <laughs> this is it, Ryan. I, just, I feel I have to justify Layla's tips to others with TS because I worry they'll dismiss it because she can be lying. Exactly. It waxes and wanes as it comes and goes. You don't tip 20... We well, do tip 24 hours of the day, but you don't tip, like... You're not bad. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Is and, and like people can do 15 second videos of where on TikTok, <laughs> you won't tick at all. And then because you're not ticking in that, because the way it's represented on TikTok, a lot of people are going, you're faking it. You know what I mean? Because like a lot of people make it out that they, they've got to 
tick every second, and it does not work like that. It really doesn't. But what I want to say is that you're 17 years old now, and Layla's obviously a young girl, and you've managed to get yourself into college. You're doing your second year come September. Uh, you've got a job um, at McDonald's, which is like a starting point for most young kids these days. So, like, ooh, it's not a lost cause. Like, that's, that's what I like to see. It's people that aren't lost causes, and, and it does get better. Um, and, yeah. But what helps you calm down? Um, martial arts really helps me. I know this isn't attractive, by the way. I'm saying it. That's right. It's the reality of it, mate. Um, martial arts is, is massive for me. When I, when I do martial arts... So, um, train I don't hardly tick at all but they're there and then when I'm in a um, sparring environment and we put our head guards scumshirt gloves on and, and we we fight it's I hardly tick at all and uh, I don't know why that is and but it's the same with so many people who have threats and, and do different activities and but martial arts is just, I started it as a way to defend myself because I was getting beaten up every day because of the that I was having. And they weren't bad ones, they weren't sweary ones, they were everyday ticks, but I was just weird and different. And so I started martial arts to try and defend myself and wow, you know, it saved my skin more times than I care to talk about. It's also helped me with my ticks loads. Well, martial arts is a lot about the mind as well as the physical strength, isn't it? But you've got to have the discipline. Yeah, and I don't think I'd be able to do anywhere near as much as I can now, especially with awareness and things, because I wouldn't have was... confidence. I mean, I, I was an assistant instructor for a long time um, in, in martial arts, and I um, was a young leader, and I run classes, and I, and I taught, and I'll probably go back to that at some point as well, but you know, so I, it's helped me so much. Correct, no, but with comorbids as well, and so. <laughs> what 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 comorbids have you got? Oh, okay. Um, so I've got Tourette's, dyspraxia, dysgraphia, ADHD, panic disorder, anxiety disorder, ASD. Um, and sensory processing disorder. Wide <laughs> And I can't remember if there's one more or not. That's it. I got a collection. I got have. I have a nice list. <laughs> I have to be Tourette syndrome, having a seventy nine percent on the global tick scale. What's a global tick scale? <laughs> That's new to me. Um, <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, is it where people count their ticks? The severity. This is what I mean. Like no, nobody needs to be more. Severe than others. Uh, like obviously, I'm not. I'm. I, I can say this now. I'm not ever disputing what you've got. I'm just saying I've never heard of the global tick scale before. Hi. Are these like question comment things? Because I can't. Um, they're like comments at the bottom. Um, but this Clarissa, I know her very well. She talks to me a lot. She's a wonderful woman. I can't. Brilliant see. as well. Um, so <laughs> her daughter wanted to be a neurologist. Uh, but she said she doesn't want to be a neurologist anymore. You'll be glad to know she wants to be an artist. What kind of artist is what I want to know on that one. I mean, I, my, my crux is because obviously I can't like go to work because it's horrible for me out there. Um, I need to set up a turtle rescue at my home, all funded by one. <laughs> and then and that's me. That's me done. Just leave me locked away in a padded room with turtles and I'll be fine. <laughs> So I'm Game of Thrones. Not ever. You say that's not work, but that is a full time job in itself. You're looking after them always. <laughs> oh yeah, it um, keeps me busy. Yeah, well, it is a full time job. You're yeah. running the rescues. I mean, like just before I came on live with you, I looked at my one of the like the other way from pond enclosure, and I'm looking and I'm going, that's not moving. The water's not moving as fast as I want it to be. So it's like, I'm going to put it in, done, so it dust it. You don't harass me first. <laughs> um, so obviously, how do you think you've like you've turned seventeen? Mm -hmm. I personally can't drive. How do you think you're going to get on with driving? 
I'm hoping it's going to be like martial arts and I'm not going to tick at all or, or hardly any. Um, oh. I mean, I've got my first lesson tomorrow, so I suppose we're, we're going to find out um, how, how it's going to be. But I think I'll be fine. Um, <clears throat> I think that I've, I've gotten quite good at suppressing my ticks and hiding them and holding them off. And that's partly due to my experiences through school yeah. um, and I need to. Um, and also due to the help that I got from Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, but I, um, I feel like I, I, I'm sort of I'm worried about it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but if you worry about it, you're going to get worse. Like, <laughs> more, do you know what I mean? More ticks, so. I have dreams where I'm driving, and trust me, I'll wake up and I'll sweat. I'm literally like, like, I couldn't imagine doing the real thing. Um... I mean, the neuroscience behind the brain interests me, especially when it comes to TS. Same. I mean, like, we are completely, like, <coughs> different. Um, <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, we are different brain, and a lot of us are more creative if you have Tourette's as well, which is what they've noticed. And I mean, I've done media. I've done media for four years. Spencer's on his second year of media. So, and you just get, <laughs> like, yeah, you're more creative. <laughs> but, so. Right, what's the time? Give it another 10 minutes. What are we going to talk about? Um, <laughs> what was it like when you were filming for your TV show? Great. I, I, it was great. Um, but also frustrating. Um, it was weird in the beginning and then got used to it after. And they were filming for a year because it was... It on TV show, but we we did things that we didn't think that we would be able to do. Like we we went abroad, and that was never something that we thought we could do. And it's so never done before. Um, we pushed ourselves to the limits. We went into different restaurants and things, which again never really did because of the way the public react and and things like that. Not like, it, it it helped. It, it was great. It, it was a good experience. There were, you know, some ups and some downs with it. Um, we um, we accomplished a lot. I feel like in in that year, um, we went to lots of different places and met different people and did things that you know gained our confidence and and that we didn't think that we could do for a very long time. So I, I feel like it was. Wow, it was sort of eye opening for us as well as and, and sort of took us on a journey as well as the program does itself to viewers and things. Yeah, I mean, like I, like there was a certain part in Employable Me where I, there, this bloke called Tom was talking and like he had um, sepsis, which caused him to become physically disabled. Half his face was gone practically. He had no arms, no legs. And there's a film made of him called Starfish. If you can, like, if people want to look it up, it's a brilliant film. Um, but I was sat there and everything was running through my head. His wife was there and all I could think of was, um, like, Phantom of the Opera and all this lot. Like, it was really, really bad. But the thing that made it worse is I noticed one of the cameras, uh, like, the, the director or somebody had obviously picked it up because he was like, look at Ryan sort of thing. And I was just like, why does the camera have to be on me? right now mm. like and i'm sat there and like when you watch it back you can physically see the struggle that i'm going through and i'm like mm. <laughs> no bit windows um so like I, it was just the like the sort of pressure as it were mm. like because your tips what i said to him is the first thing that i said to him like when doing it is i'm not a performing monkey like, I'm not going to sit there and put tick on for a show because that's what you want. I'm going to show you the raw side of it and the funny side of it, and that's what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can probably find Spencer's show on all four. They, I think they might have... You can find it, but I don't think you can play it anymore. I think they took it off, like, three months ago or something like that. Oh, OK. Uh, my one, Employable Me, is <laughs> on. Uh, you can see my This Morning interview on YouTube. And there's probably bits of important for me. There's definitely bits of Spence on YouTube. Yeah. Um, um, all the stuff that I've done for the BBC is on YouTube. 
um, and the Channel 4 documentary. If you've got VPN, change it to America and you can watch yeah. it on YouTube. Um, no. But it, it's copyrighted in the UK because um, it was Channel yeah. 4, so you can't get it on YouTube. Or... <laughs> well, that's what we get for being stardoms, eh? No, I'm joking. Um... <laughs> Just, just flash our like cards at the VIP entrance. Right? Mm. <laughs> um, are you looking forward to turning eighteen and to be going out like drinking and clubbing? Yeah. Because for me, I like clubbing mm. because the music's loud. If I'm ticking, I look like the weirdo that's just had a bit too much to drink, which I'm fine with. <laughs> and like, I can sort of just be myself. Yeah, I'm. Thought that as well because through school and, and things I wasn't treated the best by all teachers, especially primary school and the secondary. And I hid who I was because I felt I needed to um, and things like that. And so I didn't feel like I could be me. And so I'm I'm looking forward to turning eighteen, not just sort of that aspect, but getting out there and being an adult and being my my own self. So. Yeah, I feel like it's a nice way to sort of be me again, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I'm just, no qualms, no, no, no skins or masks. Well, that's what we're planning on doing this summer. Anyway. It's going to be a bit of a laugh when we manage to see you. Um, seeing things like these with more young people use social media and live stream tours and university. Cool. That's good. Um, oh, oh yeah. there we go. I'm um, just going down. Ooh. Oh, Clarissa, I didn't see that one. Um, you guys really helped me be the best mum I can be so and best for my daughter. Well, I'm going to say now, Clarissa, if you're watching this back, you help yourself, my dear, to be the best mum. We just sit here. <laughs> like, but yes, thank you. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> Seeing more people with young people with TS sharing their experiences through social media gives me more hope in humanity. Well, yeah, um, if they're representing it correctly. But no, yeah, I'm, I'm really sour on that and I don't know why and it's bugging me. <laughs> Ooh, right. If we end it there, it's a nice 40 minute like, sort of live episode. But this will be up on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it, Spence. <laughs> I mean, we meant to do one ages ago, but it sort of failed and flaked. I it on my account, but saved, and I don't think it let me share it. <coughs> we, lost we need it. to we lost get a video downloader and copy the link and then put it in. I, Dealing with TS in schools is really tough. I hate it. Well, I will say one thing. My school is brilliant, and hearing stories about... <laughs> Um, like hearing stories about the people, not bad wankers, bullshit. Um, <laughs> hearing stories of people with that had a, a, like horrible school, like trauma as well, were, is, is really really gets to me because I had a really good understanding of school, understanding parents a lot, and I know a lot of people don't have that. <laughs> so, but yes, right. I'm gonna say goodbye, <clears throat> and I'll ring you in a second. <laughs> Right. Thank you for joining, guys. Um, if you want, you can go to my IGTV where you can watch the other episodes, the previous two series. Um, this is series three. Um, and I will be, there's another one coming up Sunday. Not sure what time it is. It's going to be a functional neurological disorder special. And then I've got another one lined up for 9 p.m. Monday uh, with an amazing bloke from America who happens to be a, a placement, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, so join in. Have fun until we see you again. <laughs> Not bad. And thank you. Right. See you later, Spencer. Yeah. Bye.